In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Endless Recorder Notebook. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a paper test, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this notebook coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. This is the Endless Recorder A5 hardcover notebook. This notebook features Tomoe River's 68 GSM paper. And the 68 GSM version is the slightly thicker version. The most famous version is 52 GSM, so this is a little bit thicker. And if we look at the, the specs here, we can see that there's a dotted page layout, 187 numbered pages, 16 perforated sheets, a table of contents, expandable inner pocket, page marker, and then it's that A5 size. It's designed in Madras, India. It's made in India. I'm not sure where in India. Okay, so let's open this up. So on the cover here, we have this endless embossing here, their little logo. And then on the back, endless is embossed. There was glue stuck to this half jacket, so we've got a not-so-nice thing there on the cover now. Inside, you get this little booklet that says, thank you, this notebook is distinguished by its uncompromising attention to detail. Inside, you get a recorder ID, a unique ID for the notebook, and you get a, a sticker, so that's a nice thing there. Here we have the paste down with this kind of strange dot pattern here. You can put your name or the subject here and then you have that endless logo there. So this page is blank and then we have table of contents. The back page is blank here. And then we have the dot grid which is nice bright white 68 GSM Tomoe River paper and they're numbered. And then in the back we have a pocket here Pretty standard and there are 16 perforated sheets. Now I don't believe these are micro perforated just looking at them and I find that the pages are pretty hard to take out partly because they're thin but partly because the perforation isn't the best. So those are the, the main features. There's a bookmark. So that's pretty much the layout of the notebook. Now I have a second one here. And the reason that I have two is that I purchased this one from Goulet Pens and I was a little bit disappointed with the quality. And so I, I wrote a review, uh, an honest review of what I thought was good about it and what I thought was bad about it. And they reached out to me and said, hey, I don't think this is you know representative of the product. So they sent me another one for free. So that's very good service. I appreciate that. I'll go over some of those issues that I had with this notebook, but let's first take a look at the, the paper test. So for anyone that's used to Moe River, you know, this is one of the most fountain pen friendly papers that you could buy. You're not going to get any feathering on the really extreme end. You can get some bleed through. So like this pilot six millimeter parallel pen, you can see super minor, minor spotting like I'm pretty much not worth mentioning. Now, this paper is not impervious to permanent markers, so this Sharpie bled through. The Stettler uh, Lumo color bled through a little bit. Pilot oil drawing pen bled through, and the Copic sketch bled through. But otherwise, everything else passed. And if you look at the face of this, it is, there's no feathering. This is a coated paper. I'm not certain of the original intention for the 68 GSM paper. The more famous 52 GSM paper was designed as a Bible paper, so you're trying to cram a bunch of pages into a smaller book. You need a thin paper that can hold ink. So this is a coated paper, just like the 52 GSM version. And the dry time is very long on this. It's not crazy for a coated paper, but it, it's a long dry time. And I tend to like to use a blotting paper like this, especially if I'm taking notes where, you know, I'm writing fast and I need to quickly turn the page over. If you do that, you're going to get ink on the other page if you don't blot the page first. And you can see here, I mean, there are just a couple spots where I turned that over and it hadn't fully dried. So that's one issue with this paper, potentially, but it's very fountain pen friendly. If you like 
you like inks that sheen, this is a very good paper to show off sheening. Anyway, there's a lot of information out there on Tomoe River. You get lots of ghosting because it's so thin. This is slightly better than the 52 GSM version because it's a little bit thicker, but in practice, I honestly think it doesn't really matter. There's a lot of ghosting here. You can see here, writing on both sides, you can kind of see the ink through on the other side, and then here you can see it quite a bit. Now one trick to this is if you have a black piece of paper, which I do not, but we can use this cover from the other one, and that kind of just cuts down on that ghosting, whereas here it's going to look much worse. So that's just a tip for using Tamale River paper. Blotter sheet is nice. Some notebooks do include a blotter sheet, this one does not, but that's more of an exception, the rule in my opinion, in terms of having a blotter sheet. So I'm going to point out a couple of the things that I was disappointed with in this original notebook. The first was the bookmark was threadbare, and this isn't a particularly nice bookmark. It's got a nice color to it, but it's not particularly, doesn't feel particularly durable. It doesn't quite match this blue elastic strap. This is more green, this is more blue. Not a big deal. This was a page that was not cut very well, so you can see it's actually it's a little bit longer than most of the other sheets. That is something I have seen in other Tomoe River notebooks. It's not an exclusive issue to this one, but it's something worth pointing out, and I definitely have plenty of Tomoe River notebooks that do not have this issue. In fact, this replacement one that they sent me does not have that issue, so this could be just a, a one-off. Here on some of the pages, and I don't know if you can see this, come on, there we go. There's no dots right here, so I don't know what happened with the, the printing on this. There's dots down here, down here, but not right here, and there are a couple other pages like this where the dot grid just is not there for some reason. So I didn't particularly like that. The other thing is these covers do not feel particularly nice. They do have a nice leather look to them, like a leather grain, but they don't feel nice. And, you know, just, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, just the quality is not very good. Like, I've already got loose stuff here. I can see... There are parts on this notebook where there's like the, the brown inner to this is showing up through the cover. It's not a very nice cover. What else? Well, on this one, we had this issue with the glue. And there's a, I didn't mark it in here, but there are some dirty pages in here where there's like a some kind of black smudge here. I don't know why what that is from. So, my impressions, and like, okay, here's the, the paste down, and there's a little hole in it. So, I do think this replacement one is better than this one, but it's not perfect. And, you know, I kind of had to think, do I want to make a video on this notebook? And I kind of went back and forth on it. Ultimately, I think this is a good notebook if you like the features and you want that Tomoe River paper. I can't think of another notebook that uses Tomoe River that has as nice of a format as this. So you get the table of contents, you get the numbered pages, and the nice dot grid bright white paper. And you do get a slimmer form factor. You know, this is 14.1 millimeters thick for I believe it's 192 GSM, or no, excuse me, it's 192 pages. Some of those front pages are lost to the table of contents, so they say 187. But anyway, it's a lot. So this Rhodia web notebook has 192 pages, and we're looking at 17.9 millimeters. So, you know, you're getting a much thinner notebook here. So there's a lot of good things about the Endless Notebook. Oh, one other thing to mention about this notebook is it is a lie flat binding. The cover isn't particularly flexible. It does flex. There's only seven signatures, which is not 
very good for the number of pages in here. And that just leads to, it lies flat, but not as flat as it would if it had more signatures. I also don't love that there's, there's no headband here, so you can just see kind of like this brown paper and like glue in the back of the spine. It just, this notebook doesn't feel luxurious. The paper is really good, Japanese Tomoe River paper, but everything else about it is kind of underwhelming. So I decided to do the review because I think this notebook can make sense for some people. I can't think of another notebook that uses Tomoe River that has all of these features. And $23 for a Tomoe River notebook is not particularly expensive, and you do get a great format. So for me personally, I don't like the build quality. Other people won't care about that. I like a nicely made book, and this is not really it, but you get great features and you get Tomoe River paper. So I think it's worth considering, and that's why I decided to show it here. And you know, people might say that, you know, Blake, you're being crazy with nitpicking the details. And maybe that's true. Maybe I'm more sensitive to that than other people. But I review a lot of notebooks, and I will say, build quality-wise, this feels at the lower end, especially at, the, at this price point. Anyway, that's the Endless Recorder Notebook. So what are my pros and cons for the Endless Recorder Notebook? The Tomoe River paper is really good for fountain pens. You can go pretty much as wet and wide as you want, and you're not going to really see bleed through. The other great thing about this notebook is the format. You're getting an A5 size, which is very thin with 192 pages, and you have numbered pages, you have perforated pages in the back, and you have a table of contents, you have the elastic strap, the bookmark, the expandable pocket in the back. They really got all of the features that I like in this notebook, so that was really good. Now, things that I don't like, mainly my biggest issue with it is kind of the, the build quality. I have two of these now, and you know they seem to be kind of made in a way that's maybe a little bit more sloppy. There are pages inside that are dirty or that are missing dots in some area. The cover feels cheap. There are only six signatures for 192 pages, which is not a lot and it doesn't lay quite as flat as most of the other notebooks that I like to use and that I've reviewed on this channel. So in that sense, it's definitely a letdown. There are also downsides to the Tomoe River paper. You have really strong ghosting. You can pretty much see right through it. And then you also have very slow dry times. So I, I like to use Tomoe River paper with a blotter sheet or a blotter card. It just helps if you're taking lots of notes and you want to flip pages before that ink has dried. You really need to blot it, otherwise it's going onto the other side of the page. So, do I recommend this notebook? Well, yes, if you like the format and you like Tomoe River paper. I'm not aware of another notebook that has all these features with Tomoe River, so I can still recommend this. It's pretty good. I don't think it's going to fall apart by the time you get to the last page or before that. It should hold up. It's just not quite as nice as I would have liked. I do recommend the notebook if you like the features and you want to mow a river. So, do you guys have this notebook? Do you like this notebook? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen paper and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, and until next time.